Okay, in this video, we're going to um, review supply and demand, and we're going to do it for the labor market. Okay, so um, talking about supply and demand in the labor market. So uh, hopefully you've you, you've taken a micro class before, and so you've seen the supply and demand model, um, but it's very likely you haven't seen the supply and demand model for labor market. Okay, so uh, we, we want to re to review the basic idea of supply and demand, and we're going to add on to this the labor market. So remember, in your basic supply and demand model, we have uh, P and Q. Don't write that down. But here we're going to have different labels on our uh, y-axis and x-axis. So our y-axis is going to be W and our x-axis is going to be L. So W is the wage, so this is how much the workers are earning, and L is the number of workers. And just like um, in the case of a product market where each uh, market, each supply and demand graph represents the market for a particular good, in this case you can think of it as representing the, the uh, market for a particular type of labor, okay, for, for a particular type of labor. Um, so the the other thing to, to think about, so we can draw our demand, our demand is still downward sloping, but it's a little different than before. Here our demand is coming from the firms. So in the case of supply and demand for a product market, uh, the demand is coming from the households, but in this case it's coming from the firms. So the firms are the ones doing the hiring, um, so they're Therefore, this is uh, the demand is coming from the firms. So the demand is two two things about it. One, it's downward sloping, which we'll talk about in just a second. And the second, it's it's derived from product demand. So what does that mean? Derived from product demand. So it means the they're not just hiring workers for the sake of hiring workers for fun they're hiring workers because the workers produce something which people want to buy okay and so the 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 demand for labor for a particular type of labor uh really depends on the demand for the products that use that uh that use that kind of labor in the production process okay so uh the second part is that we're saying here, here we're downward sloping so well downward sloping just tells us this so if we label a point here like a and maybe b so let's suppose we start at A. So if we lower our wage, right, then the firms are going to demand more labor. So they they want to hire more. Okay, that's the way to to put this into words. So if we if we lower our wage, they want to hire more because it's going to be cheaper for them to hire more. Um, we're going to see some some uh, some more things in a little while. It seems kind of obvious, but but it's actually not as obvious as you might think. And then going back from B up towards A, maybe if you raise the wage, they're going to want to hire less. Okay, that's that's what uh, that L D L little D um, just means labor demand, right? The the or, or the quantity of labor demanded. So the question we need to ask ourselves in this video is why? Oops, I don't need a number here. Why is demand downward sloping? So our question: Why is our demand downward sloping? And there's actually three reasons. So you're gonna, as you'll find out throughout the course, um, things that seem quite simple to lots of people, uh, when economists look at them, their their explanations actually can be kind of complex. So I, I'll try my best to make these complex uh, explanations understandable. Um, so the first reason is something called diminishing marginal productivity. So, so if all the workers produced exactly the same, um, then then we might uh, not not experience this downward sloping demand curve, at least not to the same extent. Okay, but actually, what ends up happening is often the when you start adding labor to each firm, then the and the initial workers produce quite a lot because when you have no workers, you can't produce anything. Right, so the initial workers produce quite a lot, but then as you get, um, if you don't change your your physical capital, so for example, you have a restaurant and you don't increase the size of your restaurant or the size of your kitchen or the size of you know number of chairs and tables you have, etc. So at first you add more workers and they can be quite productive, but then once you reach a certain point, um, adding more per workers doesn't help you produce that much more. Right, and so you'll only hire those extra workers if they're really cheap. So um, you're not going to hire uh, a bunch of extra workers to 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 provide you know like perfect customer service at every moment, um, unless those workers are really cheap. 
or the value of what they're producing is really high. So um, we get this, so we're gonna add, if you add more workers to the same capital, so capital is like physical capital, I'll use the symbol K, so we're talking physical capital like, like, a, a, re, like a building or machines or something, and then each, work, each new worker, so as you add each new worker, then um, produces less extra production. Okay, and so the, the when you already have a lot of workers and you add some more, the extra production they add is quite little, and so um, they're not as valuable to you. Therefore, you only hire them if they're cheaper, okay, or if they're cheap. Uh, a second reason is something called the substitution effect. You probably heard of substitution effect in another sense before, and it's similar to that one. So basically, when the wages are higher. So if we think about raising our wages, you can also do it with lowering. It'll just be the opposite. So when the raises are high, wages are higher, workers or this type of worker uh, look expensive compared to other inputs. So at least compared to where they were before. So if you're going along and then all your costs don't change and the cost of workers change. So we're all in all of this, we're, we're assuming, I, I should have mentioned that at the beginning, we're all, always assuming all else equal. So I, sorry, I neglected to mention that a second ago. Um, so then your workers' wages go up, nothing else changes. Well, now the workers look relatively expensive. So you'll usually use, you'll, you'll want to use um, less labor, more other inputs. Or if this is a particular type of labor, you might use less of this type of labor and more of different types of labor. Uh, so for example, um, if you saw the, the wages of doctors go up, then this may lead us to uh, want to hire more, uh, you want to hire uh, less doctors. And so on the doctors, it'll be along the curve. So that would be shown as a fall in labor demand and more nurse practitioners, just as an example. All right, uh, so that's the substitution effect. Uh, now the, the third reason we're gonna talk about here is so all these are making the slope of the demand curve be down this one is probably the most straightforward easiest to understand this one is called the scale effect and the scale effect works like this so it all has to start with wages going up because remember here we're looking just at wages everything else that's not wages changing would be some kind of shift um, but these are just along the curve so your wages go up well if all else is equal then your cost of production goes up right so if your cost of production goes up then typically, not always, but typically, this will lead to increasing the price of the good. And if you increase the price of the good, then especially relative to other prices, you'll expect your sales to fall. And if you're selling less of the good, you need to produce less of it, so you'll need less labor. Okay, so these three reasons lead us to have this uh, relationship, this negative relationship between the wages and the uh, amount of labor demanded. So the first one we have our uh, diminishing marginal productivity. The the last workers are not as productive, um, so you don't want to pay as much. If you're going to have to hire, if you're going to hire them, you don't want to have to pay as much. The substitution effect that you know the workers will start getting replaced with other inputs or different types of labor if uh, they get more expensive. And the third one, the scale effect, when the wages go up, costs go up, and when if the prices rise, then this might decrease the scale of the production. So uh, that that concludes the part about the demand curve. Um, in a second, we'll come back with the supply curve, the equilibrium, and then put everything together.